Shalom. I'm going to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rukah Kadash. I'm going to send forth double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone of Ruwa. Shalom, Wa Barakim, La Bakarim, peace and blessings to the elect. Lord's will, this is edifying to those that believe in the Lord. All right. And this is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. It says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of the Most High and not of us. All right, and this truth is like not the treasure. All right, let me get this real quick. A scripture I always quote is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8 and 5. If riches be a possession to be desired in this life, what is richer than wisdom that worketh all things? All right, so the ultimate jewel, the ultimate ruby, all right, is wisdom. And we know that wisdom comes from the Heavenly Father. And this is the ultimate wisdom, these, uh, this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding these scriptures, man. All right, so if you desire a possession in this life, if you desire a fancy car, fancy clothes, women, you know, land, beautiful, beautiful property, all right, you should desire wisdom. All right, because what? That worketh all things through obtaining wisdom. You're going to obtain all those things by default. All right, and we know that through what happened with King Solomon. All right, the Lord visited him in a dream and said he would give him anything. And what did King Solomon ask for? He asked for wisdom, all right, and all those fancy things and the things that you desire in the flesh was added onto it, man. Let's get this real quick. This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 20. It says, therefore, the desire of wisdom bring it to a kingdom. So your desire for wisdom is what's going to bring forth the kingdom. Verse 21, if you delight, be then in thrones and scepters, O you kings of the people, honor wisdom that you may reign forevermore. All right, so if you if you want to be a king, you, if you desire being thrones and scepters, okay, you're supposed to what? Honor wisdom. And through that, through honoring that wisdom, that's how the kingdom of heaven is going to manifest. All right, that's how we're going to enter in into the kingdom of heaven, that eternal rest. All right, but let's go back to the 2 Corinthians 4, 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of the most high and not of us, man. All right, the fact that we have this truth, all right, it's a testimony of how powerful and great the, the Heavenly Father is, man. All right, because here it is, we're mortal men, okay, that, that go off, all right, that die. Okay, but what we have, this truth, and this truth is from the beginning. This truth is uh, eternal, man. All right, this truth is very powerful, man. All right, verse 8, and this is the verse that I've been meditating on, verse 8 and 9. It says, we are troubled on every side, but what comes with being in this truth is you're going to catch hell. All right, the Lord said what? If you come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Man. All right, so what? We're troubled on every side. It says, yet not distressed, but we're but we're cool. All right, we're able to deal with it. All right, because what? We understand the trade-off. We know that what? Coming to serve the Lord, we're going to catch hell. All right, but the trade-off is, is immortality. All right, the trade-off is, is everlasting life. The trade-off is the kingdom of heaven, man. Things that we can't even comprehend right now, okay, or even imagine. All right, let's get that real quick. It's Romans chapter 8 and verse um, uh, 17. It says, and if children, then heirs, because we're the sons of the Most High, meaning what? We're heirs. Okay, that's what the Israelite means. Yasha Allah, he is the Prince of God, meaning that we're sons of the Heavenly Father. All right, so if we're sons, that means we're going to receive an inheritance from our Father, the Heavenly Father, or, or we're heirs. It says, and joint heirs with Yahweh Shai, because Yahweh Shai is the firstborn. So really, Yahweh Shai is the one that's going to receive everything. All right, but Yahweh Shai is going, is going to give piece of his inheritance unto us, because we're his friends. All right, we're his brothers. Brethren. It says, if so be that we suffer with them, that we may also be glorified together. But right now we have to suffer, just as our Lord Yahweh Shai suffered. So when he comes back and, and establishes kingdom on the planet earth and reigns, all right, we're going to be glorified together with him. It says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. All right, so the trouble that we go through right now, the affliction that we go through right now, is not comparable to the glory which we're going to receive at the returning of our Lord, man, which fastly approach. So let's go back to 2 Corinthians and get the meat off the bun. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and 8, it says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Here it is. We're in these dire situations serving the Lord. 
all right? And it looks like there's no way out, all right? But we know through comfort of the scriptures, all right, and, and through the testimonies of the, of the ancient men, all right, that we're going to be delivered, man. And that brings us comfort. We know that we're going at, at the end of the day, the Lord's going to give us rest, all right? We know he's going he's going to give us the kingdom, all right? So no matter what befalls us, we're, we're, we're cool with it. We're able to deal with it, whether it be persecution, all right, whether it be uh, trouble, okay? We know that the Lord is with us, all right, and that we're good, man. All right, let's see. This is Matthew chapter 11 and verse 27 or 28. It says, come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest, man. All right, because all Israelites are catching hell, man. Whether you be in the truth or whether you're not in the truth. The only difference is the Israelites that are in the truth that come back to the Lord. All right, we're going to get a reward for catching this hell, man. All right, and the Israelites that's in the world out there catching hell and being afflicted, they're just going to be destroyed. All right, this is second under seven and eight. It says, nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things. Straight means difficult things. All right, because what? We're entering in at that straight gate. We're entering that difficult path. It says in hope for the wide, but we're going to go through the straight gate. But what? We're going to inherit the wide, man. All right, which is the kingdom. It says, for they that have done wickedly have suffered the straight things. So two thirds who are out here doing wickedness, man, all right, and offending the Lord, they're also going through straight things. They're also catching up. Here's the point, though. It says, and yet shall not see the wide. All right, but what? They're going to be destroyed at the Lord's coming. They're not going to see the kingdom of heaven. All right, they're going to have to be born again back in the kingdom of heaven, man. All right, this is Matthew 11 and 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. So the Lord's going to give us rest. All right, those that are catching hell and how, and the beginning of us getting that rest is the, the comfort of the holy scriptures, man. The understanding of these holy scriptures, man. All right, let's get that real quick. All right. Let's see. This is uh, St. John chapter 14, verse 16, red letter. It says, I'll pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. All right? So the Lord is giving us the comforter, man. All right, which is this truth? Which is this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding? All right, knowing that this is a temporary dwelling that we're experiencing is comforting. It says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. See, two-thirds of our people can't receive the spirit of truth, man, because they've been rejected. It says, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. But the Lord is with us, man. So that's why we're able to be comforted. All right, because the Lord is with us. The Holy Spirit is upon us, man, and able to give us comfort. All right. This is Matthew chapter 11. All right, verse 29. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest unto your souls. All right, so the Lord is meek and lowly. All right, and we're going to find rest unto our souls, man. As long as we take his yoke. All right, meaning we got to be disciplined. We got we to gotta, um, bind ourselves to the ways of the Lord, man. We got, you know what I'm saying? All right, it says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And the Lord, the, what the Lord requires of us is not hard. You know, it's, it's not more than we what we can handle. All right. But we got to do it. And what? It's going to lead to our rest. Let's get this. This is St. John chapter 16, verse 33. It says, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. See, in the Lord we have peace, man. No matter what trouble we face, no matter what obstacle comes before us, because the Lord, Yahweh Hashem and Yahshua is with us, all right, we, we, we're, we're at peace, man. We're calm. We're cool. It says, in the world you shall have tribulation. We go through tribulation, right? It says, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. But we don't have to worry about that tribulation because Yahweh Shai over already overcame it. All right? And Yahweh Shai is with us, so that means we're going to overcome it as well. So we don't even have to worry about the tribulation we go through. And this is why we're at peace, ultimately. All right? Because we know the Lord is with us, man. All right? Now, let's get... Wisdom of Psalm. This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 1. It says, But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of the Most High, and there shall no torment touch them. All right, so we're in the hands of the Most High, man. All right? And guess what? No torment is going to touch us, because what? The Lord is with us, protecting us. He's our shield and our buckler, man. All right, let's get this real quick. This is uh, St. John, chapter 10, and verse... Uh, I saw verse 27. It says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. We're the sheep of the Lord, man. All right, we're following the Lord. The scriptures say, 
who follow the Lamb whithersoever thou goest. All right, it says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. The Lord has given us eternal life, and we're in his hand, and no man can pluck us out. All right, so what? If we've been predestined to receive this salvation, nothing's going to stop us from receiving this salvation, because what we're in the hand of the Lord. Verse 29, My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So the Heavenly Father who is greater than all, or if we're in his, under his wing, if we're under his protection, there's nothing anybody can do. All right. It was in Psalm 3 and 2. It says, In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die, and their departure is taken for misery. And they're going from us to be utter destruction, but they are in peace, man. All right, even though some of us might be martyrs and, and, and pass away, all right, we're in peace because we know that what? We have immortality waiting us. All right. Even um, the fact that we came in this truth, all right, and it, and it seems like what well, we're not, you know, aspiring to be what we were before we came to this knowledge. The unwise look at us like, damn, like, what are we doing with our lives? All right. Like it says in Wisdom Solomon 5, let's get that real quick. Wisdom of Solomon 5, verse 4 says, We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. You know, our family members, friends, people we grew up with, all right, they see how we live right now and they're like, wow, you know what I mean? This is a loser. Like, he's not going to amount to anything. What a bum, you know what I mean? You know, this, that, and the third. The different murmurs, different thoughts they have uh, behind their back. All right? But they don't know that we're the sons of the living power, man. All right? We got glory un unfathomable uh, awaiting us. That's going to uh, come to us, man, through what we're doing, man. The works that we do is far greater than the works that they do, man. Here it is. They're starting their businesses uh, they, they're becoming top real estate agents. They, they're doing all this type of things. And they think that what they're doing is greater than us going out and teaching this word. But it's not, man. All right. Verse 5, it says, how is he numbered among the children of Most High? How is his lot among the saints? Because what we do, we preach the cross. The scriptures say the preaching of the cross to them that perish foolishness. All right. So they think that what we do is foolishness for teaching this word. All right. But what it's going to lead unto our salvation. All right. And they're going to behold it. All right. Right before they get destroyed and they see us uh, being delivered. All right. They're going to realize that we were the ones that were doing the right things and, and putting in the real work. Uh, they were wasting their life. Verse six, it says, therefore, have we erred from the way of truth and the light of righteousness have not shined unto us. And the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts where there lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. All right, so at the end, they're going to acknowledge they didn't know the way of the Lord, man. And they're going to acknowledge the men of the Lord that they were on the right path, doing the right thing. All right, let's get this. Finish this wisdom of Solomon. So wisdom of Solomon 3 and verse 4. It says, For though they punish, be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. All right. It says, Having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. For the Heavenly Father proved them and found them worthy for himself. So the Most High is proving us right now. Okay, but once we get through these these trials and we're proven, okay, we're going to be found worthy, acceptable in the sight of the Most High. And what's, what's greater than that? There's nothing greater than to be accepted by the Heavenly Father. Verse 6, it says, as gold in the furnace have you tried them and received them as a burnt offering. All right. Verse 7, it says, in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. It says in Daniel that those that turn many to righteousness shall, shall shine as the firmament of heaven. We're going to have a glow in the kingdom of heaven, man. Not only are we going to have a shine and a glow, uh, but we're going to have spiritual power. All right. And we're going to use that power against these heathens. Man. We're going to subjugate the heathens all right, with the power that the Lord is going to bestow us, man. All right. The stories of King David and his mighty men, what they did. All right. The stories of Samson. Okay. We're going to get that times 10, man. All right. It says, they shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people, and their Lord shall reign forever. So we're going to be kings and rulers in the kingdom. All right. And our Lord, Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, Yahweh Bashi, Yahweh Shai, he's going to rule forever. Verse, verse uh, 10. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints, and he have cared for us. He like. All right, so I'm going to end it on that. Lord's words edifying. Call the law. Yahweh, Vashem, Yahweh, Shai, Vashem, Rukah, Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of great millstone. Ruel, Shalom, Wabaraki, and Labakari. Peace and blessings to the elect. Shalom.